hi everyone welcome to another video of what's moving the markets today we're going to be talking about the military escalation in eastern europe and how investors have been navigating through this perfect storm we're going to talk about the reaction that they've had and how that has impacted the various asset classes especially we will be talking about the one that has come out on top the most which is gold now our previous video last week already was indicating towards an expectation of this escalation and in the previous video we had indicated towards the possibility of gold going up the possibility of other uh, safe havens like the treasury bills going up and that is what we have seen leading up to the day when the military escalation was uh, enacted and we are going to now analyze this past week and when i say past week i mean the week leading up to the day which was early thursday morning that the escalation was there so we are going to monitor and analyze the performance of various etfs which will tell us which are expected to tell us that what the investors were doing and how they were navigating through this perfect storm and what was their reaction which we will do in terms of number one we will see which etfs gained the most which lost the most in terms of percentage change and then we will also monitor the amount of inflows and outflows so where the money was going into and where it was flowing out of and then we're going to move on as always and talk about what the way forward should be now as in every video i say this and i will repeat that this is a casual series please do your own due diligence before taking any investment decisions because we are going to be discussing whether the current situation should be treated as an opportunity to buy the dip or should we be cautious and reduce our exposure to risk assets however please do not treat this as investment advice this is a casual video series do your due diligence before taking any investment decisions so what were the top gainers leading up to this escalation no surprise here gold and this is something we had already indicated towards last week if some of you increased your exposure to gold you would have definitely benefited and if you look at our video last week we had also indicated towards increasing exposure towards other asset classes within uh, other commodities within the asset class of uh, precious metals and specifically we had actually talked about platinum as well now this etf the vanguard expend extended duration etf this is basically treasury securities and if you remember from our last video we had specifically mentioned that treasury securities are also expected to go up so this is us treasury securities they went up gold went up platinum went up and silver went up precious metals and us treasury securities so this is what we call textbook safe haven assets which is exactly what we talked about the week before this that would happen now top losers again no surprise here and we had indicated towards this last week that there is expected to be a big fall in russian stocks and that has been seen over here these however are not russian stocks these are uh, growth companies so the biggest holdings in innovation are the, is this innovation etf are high uh, li um, innovative growing companies which of course were at very high pe's 
be from before so naturally a correction was expected in both these areas so the market corrected and majority of the correction was seen in where in companies which were already at very very high valuations in terms of where the money has flowed into so again bonds and real estate so safer asset classes relatively where has it flowed out of so you have your S&P 500 you have a part of the S&P 500 which is financials within S&P 500 and this and this invest coke triple q and your iShares esg this is both nasdaq so it is tech stocks right so you can say these are tech stocks again because they are already at high valuations and are expected to take a hit from the rising inflation they have seen a significant amount of outflows this is a bit surprising actually because energy stocks are highly correlated to oil and um, oil has been going up a lot. So it's possible that this outflow is because of profit taking because they went up so much that investors wanted to book their profit, book their gains and then invest in, in um, treasuries and gold and uh, real estate so that could be a reason for the outflows from the energy sector however here the s p 500 financials and the tech stocks this is definitely that investors are offloading their risk because they fear both a military escalation and high inflation which brings me to the analysis of the situation and the way forward that the market is worried about number one military conflict and number two inflation so let's break it down and analyze both as far as the military conflict is concerned the us and nato forces they did not further escalate the conflict right so this is actually a very good sign that we as a race as um uh, species human beings if you look at our history from world war one and world war two what has happened now is that we are beginning to mature further and the way we are reacting to each other's uh, conflict is much more rational and this this is a very good sign so as a as a species we seem to be improving uh, in terms of our rational behavior and um, Th this hopefully should board very well for the future and as far as inflation is concerned which is the other point of concern for investors so if you really get deep into the analysis of why prices are going up right so if you analyze why prices are increasing so it's basically because of number one supply reduction and high demand increase and why the supply has been going down because you know because of the pandemic we've had lockdowns in various countries in various different industries so a lot of crowded production facilities were not operational this past one two years and naturally there was supply disruption so supply went down right there was a reduction in supply and at the same time many countries were stimulating their economies to prevent a recession they were literally handing people money so transfer payments is a, a way where governments actually just give cash to their people you know and stimulus is obviously where they increase the money supply reduce the interest rate maybe bail out corporate institutions but transfer payments is literally directly just handing people cash and that definitely increases the the demand in the economy so with the demand going up and the supply going down this is what led to the high inflation that we have been seeing however now with the end of the lockdowns in sight and the supply returning slowly but surely as well as the demand slowing down because now many countries are 
either ending their stimulus or even talking about reversing it. So naturally, when the supply goes up again and the demand slows down and even comes down, then you should see this inflation should actually calm down. And if that happens, then that relieves the investors of their inflation worries, number one. Number two, very pleasantly surprised with the global political situation. And uh, more and more we are seeing that the global powers are ready to work uh, their problems through diplomacy. And uh, we are as a species focusing on climate change issues. So this is good. It's definitely a step in the right direction. And all this will eventually lead to rallies in the stocks and securities of, um, you know, securities which are worth buying. So when I say worth buying, I mean that you need to do cogent economic analysis, thorough, strong economic analysis, and very, very good thorough due diligence of the uh, company that you're buying. So before the company, I would say you need to check the sector that you're getting into, the economy that you're getting into, some top-down analysis into what is the economy doing, in which you are planning on investing, what is their GDP growth, what's happening with their jobs growth, and um, then you can get into those different sectors, and then within those sectors, you can choose companies, make sure you do your due diligence very carefully in terms of the debt to equity ratios, and um, how much debt they have, at what rates they've locked in that debt, what is the quality of their brands, um, in terms of corporate governance, how um good is the quality of their management with respect to all stakeholders interests so again as always i would like to wish you happy investing and uh, the best of luck thank you very much mm -hmm.